In 2021, I had the opportunity to conduct an exciting project on emotions and the stock market. We like to think that our purchase decisions are based on rational calculations and facts. However, they're often driven by emotions. The same can be asked of financial markets. Traders are humans and humans are affected by emotions. Do these emotions feed through the stock market? Studying this question is difficult because people's emotions aren't observable. While emotions manifest in observable actions, many such actions are not captured by data. So in this project, we introduce a measure to capture emotions, to capture the overall mood of a country. We want to assess whether emotions affect the stock market. So we use music to measure the mood of a country. And this is built on the concept of an emotional congruity that people's music choices reflect their mood. And this is possible through the age of Spotify, which is the most used app in the world to stream music. Spotify provides statistics on the top 200 most streamed songs each day in every country. And Spotify also provides a score which reflects the positivity of a song called Valence. Happy and upbeat music will have a high score and sad songs will have a low score. So we take the average of these scores each day to calculate what we call a music sentiment. It is an aggregate measure of sentiment of a country. Since positivity of a song is determined by the music, not the lyrics, music sentiment is comparable across different countries, regardless of the language that they speak. So people might ask, aren't there already other measures of sentiment? Uh, yes, there are actually a couple of them. There are some of these natural measures, such as consumer confidence, GDP growth, unemployment, but they all have direct economic effects. And therefore, it's hard to distinguish whether it's emotions or it is the economy that drives the stock market. Other studies have also used external events, such as a major sporting events, aviation accidents, terrorist attacks. However, these events occur sporadic sporadically. So this results in a measure that is non-continuous. So really, the novelty of our study lies in finding a measure that reflects national mood, something that is continuous, and also comparable across different countries. Our team finds that music sentiment is more positive during holiday periods and during sunny compared to cloudy days, also at times when COVID restrictions were lifted. So we linked this sentiment measure with the stock markets and we found that higher music sentiment is associated with higher returns during the same week. But it also leads to lower returns the following week, which suggests that the initial reaction was a temporary and one that was driven by sentiment. So people might argue whether these results are just spurious, lucky finding, but we show that our results hold across 40 different countries after removing outliers and they're also robust across various asset classes. So what do we actually learn from our study? Well, our first goal is not to promote profitable trading strategy. We do not suggest investors calculate music sentiment and use it to predict the stock market. But rather, we want to show that emotions affect the stock market. What this means is that investors should be wary of their own emotions when making investment decisions, such as when buying into a bubble or selling during a crash. What these studies also demonstrate is that we can use big data to reveal aggregate sentiment. So unlike Sporting events, which are infrequent, music is enjoyed everywhere all the time. And therefore, being a universal language, music enables us to construct a comparative measure of national sentiment in real time around the world. <laughs>